Good morning to everyone. It's good to see everyone out today. I know a lot of folks are struggling with colds and COVID and viruses and all, all these other things. Hopefully you're feeling better. If you're online with us today, not feeling good, hope that you get to feeling good soon. We're glad that you're with us this morning. Danny and Charles, glad y'all are back in town. Uh, glad your trip went well and I've already seen some results. Danny on Facebook of a church building and people worshiping in that church today and that's neat to see. Also here's some other good things from what's going on down in St. Vincent with uh, David and Andrew and pray that they have a better trip home than getting down there. Uh, we've got some other folks that are coming in in the next few weeks and months. Uh, some of our missionaries, where, whether Lydia Todd's going to be showing up in a few weeks and Ernest from Philippines is going to be with us. Surrender and Marsha are going to be with us soon. A lot of good things wonderful things that are taking place and we're a part of it all folks so understand that and be a part of it recently i talked with someone a christian who was struggling though in trusting in god now folks this person wasn't a member here however their concern i believe is more common than what we want to believe all of us from time to time we question our faith. We question if our salvation is truly secure. And to some extent, again, all of us need to learn more. We need to develop more faith. We need to develop more trust. I'm sure that is true. But at the same time, Nathan King, just a month or so ago in his sermon, related a, a survey that a preacher did in his own, own congregation. And how in that survey, only 40% were sure of their salvation. I hope, folks, I really hope our percentage is above that. But there are times, there are times when we question, is my salvation sure? We question our faith and we struggle sometimes in our own minds on can I can truly Trust what the Lord has promised. As good as Nathan's lesson was, don't worry, I'm not going to present that one again, okay? But I do want to encourage you to examine your heart, examine your trust, examine your faith, because the Lord wants us to have confidence. He wants us to have assurance, no doubts, no fears. And we often sing the song, and I appreciate uh, uh Tom, <laughs> I appreciate Tom in leading us in our song. Isn't it wonderful to be able to, to trust in our Lord? Isn't it so very sweet? And indeed, folks, our trust in the Lord should provide that security. It should provide that, that peace that is so very wonderful, that is so very sweet. So what I want to do today is answer three questions. What really is trust? What really is trust? What does it really mean to trust in Jesus? Secondly, why is trusting in the Lord so sweet? We sang about it a few moments ago, but why? Why is it so sweet to trust in Jesus? And then the last question, why should I place my trust in Christ? Why should I really believe in him? And folks, the object at the end of our lesson this morning is to answer those questions, not only for ourselves, but also so that we can go out with confidence and do as what Jerome said today, stand up for the Lord, but go out into this world and tell others that they can trust in the Lord as well. So let's get into our lesson. I want us to go back and focus upon, upon our text before we get into it that was read by Will just a few moments ago. Ephesians 1, verses 7 through 14. Folks, this is a powerful, very powerful text that, that relates several blessings that is found in the blood of Christ. In Christ's blood, folks, we find the redemption of our sins, verse 7 and verse 14. In Christ, we are adopted. We become children of God who receives his inheritance for us, verse 11. In Christ, there is grace, God's grace that is richly given to us, verse 7. 
In Christ, we've received the wisdom, the prudence, or understanding of what was one time a mystery, but now has been revealed to us, verses 8 and 9. And in Christ, folks, we're accepted. Through God's marvelous goodness, he has gathered us together as one through Jesus Christ, verses 9 and 10. But, but our focus today is found in the thoughts particularly found in verses 11 and 12. Verses 11 and 12, let me read them again if you don't mind. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be the praise of his glory. Folks, in these verses, Paul explains why we have spiritual blessings. It is because, folks, this is God's will. It is God's will. It is God's desire for us. It is at his pleasure in giving us those spiritual blessings. Peter relates that God is not willing, what? That any should perish. Verse, or 2 Corinthians 3, verse 9. This is why he revealed his plan. This is his message of redemption, of adoption, of grace and acceptance because God wants every one of us to be saved through his son. It is through our trust. It is through our trust in Christ which deity gloriously offers all blessings to us. Verses 13 and 14. Indeed. It is so sweet, so very sweet to be able to completely trust in our Lord. So what does it mean? What does it mean to trust? Folks, we, ha we have trust in others when we depend upon them to do what is needed. You might be thinking of several examples, several thoughts that may be coming to your mind. One that comes to my mind is an employer-employee relationship. Employers hire individuals to fulfill their jobs for their business, for their company. They trust, they trust that those individuals whom they've hired will fulfill their job responsibilities. Plus, the person that was hired has trust in his employer, employers, that those employers will pay them properly for the work that they are doing. But even more so, folks, we trust God to fulfill what he's promised. Remember when the Lord spoke to Abraham about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah? How Abraham began to negotiate with God. Always an interesting passage. Genesis 18, verses 25 through 33. <clears throat> Abraham says, if we can find 50 people, 50 people in this city, would you spare the city? Then he went to 45, to 40, to 30, to 20. He says, God, if we can find just 10 people, 10 people that are righteous people, would you destroy the city or would you preserve the city? And we know God's answer, I'll preserve it. I'll preserve the city. I appreciate Charles's uh, prayer and talking about our country. And I wonder if we're the ones that are preserving our country. I pray to God we are. But, but at the beginning of this conversation that Abraham had with God, God asked, or Abraham asked him a question. Verse 25, far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. What is Abraham asking God? Will you do what is right? Will you do what is right in this situation? Of course, folks, we know. We know God will do what is right. I don't think that Abraham is being critical of God, but rather he's asking a rhetorical question here. Abraham knew that God could be trusted and God, would be de God could be depended upon and not punishing the righteous, but delivering them. Folks, Jesus has proven that we can depend upon him 
for what is needed and for what is right. He has done what is needed for our salvation. Romans 5 verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Folks, the word demonstrates in this passage has the idea of putting everything in its place. Jesus did everything to get things organized, to get things done so that we can have salvation of our sins. He's done everything needed and we can trust in him. But trust means that we can take someone at their word. On one occasion, the disciples were out fishing. Folks, it was one of those tough days. How many fish they caught, we know the song, caught no fish, none at all. Luke chapter five, verses one through 11. <clears throat> and then Jesus approaches them and asked Simon to take him off the shore just a little bit. And the Lord then taught the people that had followed him, sort of an amphitheater with the, the seashore. And when Jesus concluded his lesson, he asked Peter to go out into the deep, go out into the deep of the water and cast out his nets. And you remember Peter was sort of reluctant. Uh, Lord, we've, we've fished all night. We've been fishing all night. We, we didn't catch anything. But notice what Peter said in verse 5. Master, we've told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down my net. Folks, we know what happened. They caught more fish than they could even handle and asked their partners to bring, bring their boat out to help them. And both boats were so full that they nearly sank. Peter was reluctant, yet he did what the Lord said. And the Lord proved to him that he could be trusted. And the Bible states that when they brought their boats to the land, that they forsook all and followed him. That takes trust. That takes a great amount of trust. And folks, God's not asking any less of us to forsake all and follow him. The Hebrew writer relates the great ability that we have in trusting the Lord. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 18. He relates that God gave Abraham the promise that he would bless Abraham, <coughs> yet Abraham had to wait. He had to wait. He had to be patient. He had to be patient for the promise to come true. And of course, we know the promises came true to Abraham. And from this, we develop our faith and our hope, uh, Hebrews 6 verse 18 that by two immutable things in which it's impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation. The word there means encouragement. It means comfort. It means persuasion. Who had fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope that is set for us. Friends, there is great comfort. There is great hope in knowing that we can trust in the Lord just as Abraham did. Romans chapter 4, verses 19 through 30, uh, 22. And do not, and not being weak in faith, he, talking about Abraham, did not consider his own body already dead since, folks, he was 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he promised, he was able to perform and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. So friends, do we trust? Do we understand trust? Folks, we can trust in God and even the great promises that God has given to us. Question two. This leads us to our second point. Why is trusting in the Lord so sweet? Folks, recognize if we have complete trust in anyone, then we do not have to worry about what they say or uh, is it true, is it not true. We have confidence in them. 
And this is true about our Lord who established that we can have confidence in him. Jesus helps us, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus helps us to understand how we can trust him in providing for our material needs. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. Jesus states that God provides for the birds of the air. He provides for, uh, for the, the grass and the fields and so forth. And he says, are you not more valuable than them? He provides and cares for them, and that's why he also has promised to provide for us. Matthew 6, verse 31, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where, what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. But seek first. There you go. Trust him 100%. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Paul teaches us that we need not to be anxious because we can trust in our Lord. Philippians 4 verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. To God. Folks, every one of us, we mentioned it earlier, every one of us from time to time, we're going to have doubts. Yet such doubts we need to cast aside. When we doubt, folks, that is that part of us that is struggling. They don't belong with us in God. We must remember that in Jesus Christ we can do all things, Philippians 4 13. <coughs> Let me encourage you, keep that passage in context. I cannot control the universe, however, the Bible teaches us that our Lord can. Ephesians 1 verses 21 through 22. I can't trust in my own righteousness to save me, but I can put my trust in Jesus Christ and his righteousness who does save me. Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. I cannot bring myself back from the grave, but Jesus can bring me back. Philippians 3, verses 10 and 11, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death, if by any means I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. Folks, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because my Lord is there and he's promised to do those things for me. Jesus has proven to us that we can overcome this world. He's proven to us that we can overcome the sting of death. 1 Corinthians 15, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, verses 15 through 58. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of, the, of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Christ has proven himself. He's proven himself because he gained victory over death. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 and 21 <coughs> that now Christ is risen from the grave and become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man talking of Christ, also came the resurrection of the dead. <coughs> Peter relates that we are blessed because of the hope that is given to us through Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-5. through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away. 
reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Folks, it is so very sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so very sweet to trust in the Lord because we know <clears throat> that he has complete authority. He has complete control and he will provide for our needs. That leads us to our last thought. Why should I why should we trust in the Lord? And if folks, this again is similar <clears throat> to our question before. It, it's also different. It's different because this question makes it personable to me. I must make that personal choice. That personal choice to trust in the Lord. And folks, we should trust the Lord because he's given his life for us. Again, so we can have salvation. John 3, verses 16 and 17, you can quote it. For God so loved the world, what? He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son to condemn the world, but through him, the world through him might be saved. Jesus wants us to find salvation. John 15, verse 3, Greater love is no one than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Folks, why should we trust in Jesus? Because God the Father declared that Jesus was his son <coughs> and provided this truth through his resurrection. Romans 1 verse 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Folks, why should we trust in the Lord? <coughs> because he indeed has that authority. He does have that control over all things. Matthew 28 verse 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3. God, who at various times and various ways spoke in times past to, to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed to be heir of all things, through whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. Folks, we ought to place our confidence in the Lord because without him, there is no hope. Ephesians 2 verses 12 through 13, that it, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, stranger from, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Folks, we place our trust in the Lord because there's no other name given in heaven for which we can be saved. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Why do we place our trust in God, folks? It's because our Lord keeps his promises. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Lord's not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering. He's patient, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into repentance. So what have we noticed? Let's put this together real quickly. What have we noticed in our lesson today? We've addressed what it means to trust. <coughs> Specifically, what it means to trust in Jesus. Trusting someone means we depend upon them and their word, their promises. 
But we notice that God has demonstrated that they can be trusted by fulfilling their promises and never telling a falsehood. Number two, we also address why it's so sweet, why it's gratifying to trust in the Lord. And the answer to this was rather simple, folks, because of his promises. Jesus promises us things that we cannot provide for ourselves. Therefore, we ought not to be anxious because for what happens on this earth or how this world affects us because Christ has promised us something better. And then we notice the need to make that personal choice, that personal choice of trusting in the Lord. We trust the Lord because he's promised us salvation. We trust in the Lord because he is where there is eternal life and through his authority, his power, Christ has offered us a true hope, a hope that has already been proven by Jesus. It is real. Now, have you trusted in the Lord? Have you trusted in the Lord? Have you have such a faith in the Lord that you're willing to follow him? Jesus stated that we must do more than simply acknowledge him. We must trust him. We must obey him. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So what must we do in showing our trust in the Lord today? Folks, we must develop faith. We must have belief in what he's promised us. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. We must have faith. Number two, with our faith, with our trust, we must repent of our sins, change the direction in which we're going, and turn to follow, not sin, but follow the Lord, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. And then we must confess or we must pledge our allegiance to the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then folks, the Bible tells us we must be baptized, immersed in water. That's where we receive the blood of Christ that covers our sins. You can trust and what the Bible says here. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. <clears throat> there is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God <clears throat> through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Folks, we must obey Jesus. We must trust in him and the promises he's given. When we obey, we have his promises. Possibly you're a child of God, yet you've fallen. Maybe it's a lack of trust. Whatever it might be, you've fallen away from the Lord. The Lord understands. And he wants us to understand that he still wants, he's still going to keep his promises for us. He does not desire that anyone should perish, but he asks you to repent, get back on the right course. So folks, if you need to reestablish your trust in the Lord, please do so. We'd be glad to assist in helping you in doing that. Or possibly folks, you just need prayers. Need prayers for strength, need prayers for a better voice, whatever it might be. But if you need prayers, for encouragement, prayer is for support, because this world can get tough at times. But we're here for you. We want to offer the opportunity to pray on your behalf. Folks, whatever your need might be, let us know. Either talk to us directly, contact us through the internet, come down the aisle as we together stand and we sing.